So now, I'm going to open Internet Explorer using the backlink in the spam. Now it is showing the fake website for the Office of State Revenue. Now I'm typing in the capture code. Let's see the file. I extract the file. And then run the program. As soon as I click OK, the mode will display a warning screen showing that my files have been encrypted. I'm now looking at the information. Welcome back to Philippines and Cut. Tonight's topic is cybercrime and security. And joining me still is uh, Paul Oliveria, Technical Communication Manager, Trend Micro. And uh, we said goodbye to Nick Ramos, Senior Malware Trainer. Now uh, taking his place is Benjamin Rivera. He's the Threat Research and Training Manager of Trend Micro. Welcome back, Paul. And of course, Benj, thank you. welcome to Philippines and Cut. Now, pag usapan natin yung title mo, it says Threat Research and Training Manager. What, what, what does this mean? Um, threat Research and Training Manager, uh, basically, uh, we ensure that our Trend Micro employees, even new hires or tenured engineers, are actually trained to the different antivirus technologies and other threats, uh, as well as various responsibilities and tasks uh, that involves malware handling and processing. Yeah, continue. Yeah. And uh, for the core technology department alone, we actually have three hundred engineers. And these are the guys that are in charge of, 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 of uh, you know, research and, and developing defenses, no? Yes, aside from the, the analysis, uh, they do provide appropriate solutions. Okay. What does, uh, when you say threat research, uh, how do you train them to, what is threat research and how do you train them for threat research? Uh, actually, I am, uh, I also started as a trainee, so okay. uh, during my time, it's about five to six months training, so it's oh, wow. a pure dedicated training so you have to pass all the modules so um, and if you failed some of the modules you will not be able to certify it as an antivirus engineer wow. so for now uh, especially for new hires uh, we try to compress at least to focus on the analysis and solution part so uh, it is about four months training and based on our passing rate uh, the average is actually 40 percent Wow. Okay, so it's actually a considerable, right, Paul? It's, it's quite considerable kind of training you, you put into your people. Huh? Yeah. Six months and then passing rate is 40%, so more than half don't make it. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you really get the best of the best yes. to, to work for you guys. Cool. Now, um, the video we showed earlier was uh, something, like it, it's a demonstration of, uh, of a, how someone can be um, a victim mm -hmm. of something called ransomware. In yes. fact, this year uh, is called, I mean, last year was called the year of online extortion. And this is what ransomware is all about, yes. online extortion. Let's define what, what is it. Uh, what is ransomware, Paul, and how does it work? Yeah. Okay, so ransomware, so it's a, it's a type of malware. So it's a Trojan, as yeah. Nick defined earlier. So what it does, based on the name itself, so it takes files hostage and it asks the user for ransom to pay outright. So how does it take the file hostage? So um, in the past, um, it has been about 10 years or, or so. In the past, what they do is just basically like encrypt the file, put it in a, in a password protected zip file, um, and then ask for money. Like for example, I don't know, like uh, iTunes gift card or whatever. Um, but recently, so the reason that we declared 2016 as the year of online extortion, it's because of the prevalence of this, um, what we call crypto ransomware which is kind of like the next level encryption. They are now actually um, using military commercial grade encryption. Wow. That will take years, if you try to decrypt, it will take years of man hours and whatever just to decrypt one file. Oh my God. Yeah. Military grade, we're, and, and we're talking about, 
you know, th th this is, I mean, I mean, obviously by the term, that the highest uh, yes. degree of uh, encryption, encryption possible, yeah. no? The highest military degree. grade. I mean, this commercial. is what the U.S. and Russia use and things like that. No? Yeah. And like that. Of course, this military grade or the commercial grade encryption also has, it has the key, obviously, to, 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 to decrypt that. And unlike before, the previous ransomware, the key usually they can be found in the code if they analyze it, the, the, the research engineers. But this time, they, they took away the key. It's with them. They are the only ones that can decrypt that. Wow. Yes. Ben? Yeah, uh, just to add with Paul, yes. um, um, ransomware actually um, arrives from a different uh, infection vectors. Okay. So 76% uh, 70 per actually arrive uh, via spam email messages. So mm -hmm. usually it was exported to links or an, as an email attachment. Okay. And then uh, some of the variants of ransomware uh, were actually uh, coming from, like for example, compromised websites or bundled with other malware. But, but it takes a bit of a human, human weakness or human factor because you have to open it and you have to click on the exe file, yes. the execute file. No? So if you're, if you're aware mm -hmm. and, and uh, y you don't click on exe, f you don't open execute mm -hmm. files that are you know, yeah. unknown yes. uh, <laughs> or yeah. of unknown origin, you should be mm -hmm. uh, protected. No? I mean, yes. You should be safe. Yeah. Is, there any way of, is there any other way of getting ransomware? Yeah, uh, yeah. 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 I think for uh, the compromised website or sometimes uh, uh, because of uh, vulnerabilities, so these are uh, bug found on the software. Mm. So uh, when your software were, were not actually patched, yes. so malware will be automatically installed in your computer. Mm. Ransomware. Yes. How, how, how prevalent is ransomware these days? Because, I mean, okay, we hear about from guys like you, but I personally uh, don't know anyone who's been a, a victim of ransomware. How, how often does this happen? I mean, how, how commonplace is it, Paul? Yeah, it's, it's very prevalent right now. So mm -hmm. uh, in the Philippines, uh, I'm not sure if like, there's uh, a lot of infections, but, I, but based on our data, there is a uh, couple compared to the other countries, yeah. obviously. So there, the, the more developed countries, I think, are the most infected with this. Mainly because, um, for example, the going rate of the ransom or the or payment is um, around 500 US dollars. Mm, mm. So probably that's the reason why they're focusing on the more developed countries uh, over the, the developing ones. Um, but but it, you know, if they bring down the price to fifty dollars, yeah. right? I mean, we're 100, 100 million Filipinos, <laughs> <laughs> affordable, right? Yes. I mean, you you will pay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it is Absolutely. prevalent also yes. because no. apart from apart from the the payment also, um, in the last five months alone in 2016, we have uh, identified 550 new families of crypto ransomware. When we say families, wow. like are, these are the modifications of the same one, right? Compare that in 2014 to 2015, it's about 48 families. So the two years worth of new ooh, families. Ooh, ooh, in, in one year, not, not, not even years. Year. Yeah, yeah, it's compressed into six months or six five months. Six months, yeah. That's so scary, yeah. Yes. Right, Nick? I mean, uh, Benji, Benji. Uh, scary. Yes, scary stuff. of course. And, and in, in average, we are seeing like 10 new ransomware families per month. How do you guys stay ahead of this threat? I mean, th that's a lot of work. That's a lot of, you know, threats. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you stay ahead? Uh, uh, I think it's very important that you need to be abreast, yeah. with the, especially for the ransomware landscape. Uh, what are the different methodologies or extortion techniques? What are the most common types of vectors? So if you were actually aware of that uh, and supplemented by uh, our cloud technologies or our uh, trend micro technologies, we could actually uh, uh, find a way to be one step ahead of the threat. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, as I said, a lot of us have all our information online already, you know? And so, you know, I mean, with this ransomware, you could get hit by this and you could have no access to all of your files, all of your pictures, yeah. and then all of your records could yes. be held hostage and you have no, is there any, okay, I, um, uh, Ben, I have a question. Um, let's say, God forbid, someone gets hit by ransomware. Is it possible for guys like you, guys like you in, in Trend Micro, can you, guys, can you guys open an encrypted file that, that, that's been hit by ransomware? Yes, I think uh, what Paul had shared yeah. earlier, uh, yeah. if the, uh, the encryption code is actually on the uh, code of the malware data, yeah. we could actually provide a decryptor, decryptor tool. But, but he said the key is no longer there. Yes. So right now, uh, uh, since most of the key were actually uh, uh, with the threat actor, so 
uh, it may take a years to decrypt or sometimes virtually impossible to decrypt the files. Wow, wow. So, yeah. I guess to add to that, so um, let's just assume that once your files are encrypted, unless there's a backup, you can't get them back so anymore. So it's like gone for good. Yes. Yes. Who are the usual targets of ransomware, Paul? I mean, is it, is it I mean, okay, obviously companies, businesses, with a lot to lose mm -hmm. in terms of records and financial information, all that would be. But uh, okay, let's say, be, let's say private consumers, private users like yes. you and me. Yeah, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's an industry-wide um, that cuts across the user bases and the types of uh, customers that we have in, on, of the users. So definitely, as you mentioned, so businesses are, are pretty much targeted. So they have all the trade secrets, the data. But I guess the, the main motivation for ransomware creators is that you know, they know their audience, they know the, the, the type of information or files or data that are precious to them. Mm. So for home users, yeah. yeah, they probably won't get like the encrypt the, the financial statements, but you do have the pictures, you do have yes. the videos of your family there. Yes. And if you don't have the backup, so yeah, that, that you know, it's now a choice between paying the ransom or losing your mementos forever. Why not just pay? You know, I mean, that's what, what you know, that's what, uh, yeah. you know, uh, some people would probably th that's say. A good yes. <laughs> that's a good question. That's a good question. And be more careful the next time. Yep. Right? Okay. That's a good question. And actually, a lot of people are actually more inclined, I, I believe, to actually just pay. Yeah. But, Especially you know, the price is not, you know, sky high. Let's say I said, but if it's like $50, $100, even for in, here in the Philippines, like mm -hmm. if someone hijacked my photos of my life, mm -hmm. even, even $500, I would pay. Yes. Right? But, yeah. but what is your company's stand on or policy regarding payment? Uh, our, our stand is that, you know, as much as possible, never say no to ransomware. Don't pay the ransom. Um, what about your Prevention files? is mostly the <laughs> cure for this one, yeah. Um, in the sense that, yeah, but prevention is mostly the cure in the sense that this threat of ransomware teaches us, or at least it should now be aware that for users, backup is really important. Now, why do we discourage people to pay? Number one, um, Sometimes or most of the time, you're not guaranteed that the decryption will be sent. So to they you. can just get your money and they run just, with it. Yeah, they yeah. can just get away and run with it. Number two, expose you. You get your payments in a sense that you know they will now have the more confidence that says, oh, okay, so we are. You know, it, it, he pays. Why not launch more attacks against this person uh, or this company? Yes, yeah. it encourages attacks. No? Yeah. Yes. And so. number three, uh, payment funnels the business. So. If the more people pay or the more organizations pay, that means that you know it kind of legitimizes their business model. Therefore, the attacks won't stop. How do you pay though? Oh, on ransom, you use your credit card, or <laughs> I mean, how do you pay? Yes, what uh, happens? Yes, sometimes uh, you will be asked for your credit card information. Okay. You need to input your credit card okay. information, and then you paid either in Bitcoin or sometimes they will ask you for gift cards like iTunes, Amazons, and untraceable. Yes, mostly untraceable. Yeah. The, the current um, payment method that they prefer is web currency, what he calls Bitcoin. Bitcoin, yeah. yeah. Um, and to do that, in the ransom note of this um, um, ransomware, they provide instructions on how you can pay. Go to a website. The website is actually untraceable. It's My part of the deep web or the dark web. And in order for you to access the website, you probably need to install something to access the website. And then, if you don't have bitcoins, don't worry. Well, uh, there's here's a resource yes. of how you can convert <laughs> cash. Oh, wow, I mean, they make it easy for you, huh? Yes. They make it easy for and people. we are <laughs> seeing recent ransomware uh, oh that, for example, it already have the voice capability. What so do you this mean? is uh, so this is something to verbally move the victims into action. So before it was only a ransom note. Okay. So it's just a text messages. Oh, yeah, yeah. And right now, uh, it is a command, a voice command. Like for example, uh, it plays an audio yeah, it file audio that file. says you've been infected. You've pay been infected, but pay now or your files are gone. Like yes. That, whatever. And there were also like, for example, live chat. You could actually chat, uh, with, the yes, chat with the threat actors, negotiate. Or their, or their really? tech support. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> so support you actually talk to people who are on the other side perpetrating these crimes and like talking and, and then like yes. uh, tech support. <laughs> Have some negotiations. They, they really, um, my gosh. They really kind, kind of convinces users to pay. They do anything. So either scare tactics like, you know, the voice, the voice <laughs> audio <laughs> play. Oh, for sure. That's loop. freaky. That's freaky. The timer. <laughs> yeah. So there's like a timer that, that, that and then the threat that says if you don't pay within 24 hours, the price will increase or we'll delete your files. Um, so pressure. Yeah, there's yes. pressure. And there's on the other end of the spectrum of these ransomware, there's also like the more, you know, customer centric approach. They have the live chat. Uh, if you if you can negotiate the price, there's the 
the freemium model in a sense that, you know, you know, just to make sure that you can trust me, I can decrypt three files for you for free. Oh yes. And, you know, oh my it gosh. works. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, my God. I yes. mean, this is really a business that they've transformed this into a major business. My yeah. golly. Wait, guys, unfortunately, we've come to another show. But thank you very much, Benji. But before we go, maybe last words from Trend Micro. Philippines? Yeah, so at least uh, Trend Micro, like I said, so our vision is to make sure that, you know, uh, the world is safe in exchanging digital information. But in, in this day and age of cybercrime, ransomware, and threats, um, and, you know, most of the time, these threats are happening with the involvement of the people or the humans, or, you know, there's human interaction needed. Yeah. So it's, I guess it's high time for, for users and organizations to make sure that, you know, um, Proper threat awareness of what's happening in the landscape is really, really important. And at the same time, so apart from you know investing like in the solutions or you know the products that Trend the Micro people, offers, right? Yeah, or in the people, the safe computing practices. Yeah. You know, don't buy pirated software because you know this most usually have the the, the vulnerabilities. Um, don't click on links necessarily. Make sure that you're aware of where it's coming from, if it's legitimate, and, and like that. So you know, user awareness. Uh, is can go a long way essentially. As I said, the first line of defense is you and me, the person, no? Yep. Yes. Then then you guys try to micro supplement that. Yes. Excellent. Guys, thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank very you educational and very scary. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, I hope you enjoyed our show on cybersecurity and crime. Join us again next week here at Philippine Second Cut. I'll see you next week.